Welcome to Tech Bites with Hef. Today I'm going to share Flipgrid. Now Flipgrid is the perfect platform for both in-school and virtual learning. It allows students to reflect, discuss, and learn through student voice. Let's get started. So type in flipgrid.com into the search bar and this page will come up. Now you're going to go to educator sign up and you can sign up with Google or Microsoft. So I'm going to sign up with Google and choose my account and I've logged in and now I have to tell them about myself. So I put in all the information that's necessary. I'm going to put elementary school and we'll go with December. We'll go with the first. We'll go with something that makes me, how about that? And let's go. Welcome to Flipgrid. We're going to start our grid. Uh, let's name our grid. I'm going to call it Tech Bytes. And in this area, we're going to go with a school email. With your school email, you can create your own Flipgrid code. So right here, it gives me one, but if I wanted to just change that, I could change it to what I want to make it easier for um, my students. Uh, so there we go. And next. Now in this section, you want to put whatever the suffix is for your school email account. I'm going to just put at Gmail so that uh, I can put in whatever guests I want that have a Gmail. Okay, here we go. And now my grid's ready. That's pretty easy, right? And this is what uh, I could copy to send out in an email to people to invite them. I can send it out in Embedded, I can send it to Microsoft Teams, I can send it to Google Classroom or in Remind. So let's go to our grid. So here we are at our grid and you can see I have a background photo. I have my Flipgrid link and it says add copilot. Okay. If I want to add a co-pilot, that means maybe I have a co-teacher or maybe I'm working on a special project with somebody and I can add them as a co-pilot. The next thing we're going to click on is share and you can see that you can share it just like you did before. And actions. Now here are the actions that we have. We can add our co-pilots. We can duplicate the grid. Uh, we can get grid notifications. Take a look at the grid notifications. Over here, I can have daily notifications, weekly, every time someone, student adds a new video or never. Those are my options. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the edit button. And when you edit, you can edit any of the details that you put in in the beginning. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and take a look at my background image that I kind of didn't like. So I can change my background uh, uh, image as a featured. I can look at nature ones, at people, and at textures. I'm going to try and go with a nature, and we're going to look and maybe take these butterflies. All right, and then I update my grid. So I have my new picture. The last thing I want to look at on grids is to click on my grids, okay? And when you click on my grids, you'll see that there's a button to add a new grid. So if you think of a grid as your class and you teach more than one class, you might need more than one grid. So when you add a grid, you'll start at the beginning and uh, put all the information in you did uh, at, in the beginning about your first grid. Okay, there you go. Let's move on. So here we are back on our grid homepage. And I did notice that it's a fish, not a butterfly, but I think I'll keep him. Uh, and we're gonna scroll down a little bit and you'll see that there's topics. I'm gonna add a topic. 
uh, Flipgrid starts you off with one so you have an example of it, but we're going to add our own. We're going to have a topic title and I'm going to call it fitness. And then I'm going to add my question or what I want students to reflect upon. So I'm going to ask them, uh, do you know the five components of fitness? There's my question. The recording time for them can change. I don't suggest you make it too long because they can ramble on. And then um, video moderation. It's probably important to have because you don't want children to put things up that you don't think are acceptable. So you will have to look at them all before they're posted to the class for everybody else to see. Now here's some optional focuses. You can record your own video. You can upload a video, a YouTube, uh, upload an image, Giphy, an emoji, something from Microsoft, Google, Kahoot, all these different options that you can add to this uh, topic. If you want more options down here, you can give them a tip, like a hint. Uh, you can attach a URL. It's an active. And here are the things that the students can do that you can change. Okay, they have selfies or videos or stickers. You can allow them to edit. Um, you can allow them to like other people's videos, but you can toggle that off if you would like. All right, so now we're gonna create our topic. Once it's created, it's given a link. You can once again push it out with an embedded code, Microsoft Teams, Google Classrooms, or Remind. And what I didn't point out before is this QR code that you can share it with. So you can print that QR code out and then you can post it in your classroom so that children can just take their device and move up and, and scan it and it'll go right to that website or maybe even use Google Tone. All right, so now we're all set and it'll come to this page and you can share it out from here. You can add a, a topic. There you go. That's how you've started your first question or discussion. And let's move on to see what the students have to do now. Okay, here we are on our topics. And you can see our topic has at been added. And now we want to view it as a student. So I click on view. And this is what your students are going to see. They're going to log in. And I've already logged in. And there it is. Fitness is the topic. Here's my question. If your students have a hard time reading that, they can click on this button over here and it will uh, uh, read the question for them, the topic for them. Then your student's going to click on the moderated plus sign and they're going to add their voice. So I'm going to record my voice. A screen's going to come up. When you look across the screen, there are different things that the students can do. They can add a filter. They can add text, stickers, drawings, a board, or photo stickers. Then they're going to press record and play um, and answer the question. So I'm going to press record. I'm not going to speak because it'll speak over me in the video. Uh, I'll click it on, I'll click it off, and we'll move on. There we go. Now I would be recording. Okay, we've stopped and then they can add their filters. Now, one of the filters is really nice and that's this pixelated one. It's for kids that might be shy so they could pixelate their photos so that when their um, you know, students, other students are reflecting on their response, then they won't feel self-conscious. I can redo it if I want and I'm gonna move to next. There we go. It's gonna there let me go. review it. Then I take a selfie so that, um, this will be what it looks like in the response categories. I go to next. I can add my title optional. I got this and a link if I would like and submit it. There it goes, shows that I've submitted and I'm complete. All right, let's go back and see what the teacher sees. We're back on our homepage and you can see that under the fitness topic, there is one video posted. I can view it as a student. 
I can, I have made it active. Um, I can freeze it or I can hide it. I'm going to hide it for now. And then I can share it like we did before. And there are actions that I can do. I can record, I can add topic guests, I can add to the disco library, I can activate, move, duplicate, export, and delete. All right, let's take a look at it. It pops up here, and then there we're we gonna go. view it. Now I would be recording. There we go, now I would be recording. All right, so that was my response. And I can grade it with a rubric for ideas. I can grade it on performance. I can add a comment. And then I will simply email it. Um, I can reply through a message, a video. Okay? Those are all the things you can do once somebody puts in a response. There we go. All right. Let's move on. So those are the basics of getting started with Flipgrid. There are two things I want to show you that you can explore on your own later on. And the first one, if you take a look at the top, um, is Grid Pals. Grid Pals shows you where other people across the country and around the world are using Flipgrid so that maybe you want to work on a project with them. You simply put in your grade, you put in your subject area, And then your grid bells will show up all over the world. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to show you is the Disco Library. In the Disco Library, it's the same thing. You can just type in your categories and you'll see lessons that people have submitted from all over the world so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel you can choose a lesson that somebody else has created for you. All right, and there we have some physical education and health lessons from around the world. All right, I hope you enjoyed this session of uh, Tech Bites with Hef, and I'll see you next time.